<laughs> I, you know, every time I've ever used a juicer, I've always been so frustrated at the lack of yield that comes out of whatever I'm trying to juice. <laughs> I'm yes. curious, how many apples does it take that you have to juice to fill up one bottle of cider or one can of cider? Yeah, it takes about a thousand pounds to create about 165 gallons of apple juice. Okay, so it's a lot of apples. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking probably four or 5,000 apples becomes 165 gallons of juice, okay? Um, so it's a lot, but the, the, the reason we really love what we do too is we don't have to change the natural way of things. So when you press an apple, you get a high yield. It's a very fleshy fruit. There's a lot of juice in it, right? Grapes are a bit different. They are very small and take a lot of them to create juice, right? So you're paying exponentially more for grapes to get a ton of them versus apples. Apples are just a bigger volume, widely available. They're grown in more places with varying climates. There's not so much push on the idea of has to be grown in this soil with this amount of water and blah, 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 blah. And with wine, you're watering these vineyards like crazy. There's irrigation all over the place. It's a big impact on the planet, big impact on the local sort of culture, the, the, the ecosystem. And these monocultures now that exist in Sonoma and Napa are horrible for the environment up there. They've literally ripped out apple trees that have been there for decades because it was the biggest apple growing region in California was Sonoma specifically. They ripped them all out and planted Pinot Noir because they figured, hey, apples go great in this type of environment, but so do Pinot Noir. We know that from other places in the world. So let's rip out all the apple trees and plant grapes. So you have this, this monoculture now that basically kills off the ecosystem because the same insects and microorganisms can't live anymore because they don't have these apple trees they used to feed off of. So also you're pulling all this water out of the planet to then water these vineyards in a very specific location. So you're sucking water out of the system here in California, which has been in drought for as long as we've ever been here. Where apple trees are dry farm, they have root structures that go down to 100 feet below, below the ground. They pull water from the water table down below. They don't need any irrigation at all. So we don't use any energy in our facility as far as heat. We don't heat things up. It's cold fermented juice. We don't use any water in the process here in the facility or even to grow these apples. They're all dry farmed. So our carbon footprint, our water usage is very, very low, very minimal. We're really comfortable with that. We feel like we're doing something good there. In addition to that, when you press an apple, you get a lot of yield and there's a lot of apples available in this country. It's a constant stream of supply. The number one fruit produced in this country by volume is apples. So it's very easy for us to always get the juice that we need. And when it comes in, it's fresh pressed juice, it's delivered to us overnight. And when it comes in here, it sits for three months and does its own thing. We don't tell it to do anything. We literally just sit there and watch, you know, like anyone could do this at home. You guys could literally make what we make at home. I don't know about that. I won't but, try. I won't yeah. try. Well, that's the thing. People won't try. So we're, we're happy to you know, let people in on that secret because we feel like the chances are they're not going to do it on their own. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.